Welcome to this special live stream open studio event. We'll just wait some for some folks to join. I started a little early, get some get some folks to join and maybe get some folks to say hello in the chat box. If you're just joining, say hello. Thank you. Good. Chat box is working. Um, we're waiting for, we, we, I started early. I never usually start this early, but I started early. So we're going to wait for some more folks to join. But in the meantime, please um, let us know where you're joining from. And maybe if you are planning to go to the Guild Show, which is what this whole uh, Meet the Miniaturist Open Studio is about. Uh, yeah. If you, and also, have you ever been to a Guild Show? Is This might be your first one. Tell me a little bit about why you might be here. And as you're joining, definitely say hello in the in the chat box, guys. Great to see you. I think this is my first Meet the Miniaturist of the season. I'm very excited about this. I haven't done one in since before the summer. So, hey, Marcella, great to see you. All right, so why don't we start? Welcome to this Meet the Miniaturist Open Studio event. You know, really focusing on the upcoming Guild Show, which is happening next week. We've got the show director here with us and a few of the artists who are going to be showing their work at the Guild Show. Very exciting, very exciting stuff. We're going to have, I'm um, going to talk about what's happening. Hey, Evelyn, great to see you. If you're just joining, say hello in the chat box. I started a little early. Um, so we're going to get a little bit of a, of, a, of a preview of what we're going to expect to see next week at the show. Um, if you're new to the Guild show, um, we're going to we're going to hear from Linda, uh, the show director, to tell us more about what it is, what's all what it is all about and what are the things you can expect to see if you come to the show and a little bit of what you might miss if you don't get to the show, but maybe plan on coming next year. Uh, but before that, um, some of you might not know who I am, but I am. I am uh, Darren Scala, and I am the owner of D. Thomas Miniatures. Uh, I am an unapologetic miniature, I call myself, because I'm, you know, I'm over trying to explain to people what I do and why I do it and, and all of that. And believe it or not, we're moving into an age right now where you don't have to do that anymore. The younger folks, and tell me folks who are in there, hi, Mark, tell me if you are you know, into this world, have been in this world for a while, if you agree with that statement, but the younger folks, they know it, they get it. Social media has really trained them to understand what miniatures are and they, they don't see it as dollhouse. But anyway, I'm an unapologetic miniatures. I sell miniatures um, as for a living, I'm mostly resale and resellers. I do estate sales. I'm having one right now, which is starting tonight. And this beautiful piece is part of it. So look for that. I actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put right now and I'll do it later as well. Oh no, that's not it. Um, but I wanted to put, I'm gonna, I'll put links in the chat box to all my social media and all of the social media, uh, all, all the accounts that you can find some of the people that are gonna be on this on this Zoom today. Uh, but anyway, a um, couple of things that are coming up in my neck of the words, as I mentioned, I have an estate sale happening tonight and I'll put the links in the chat box so you can go find it. Um, I also host a free webinar on how to build an awesome miniatures collection. I just had one, so thank you if you were on that webinar, uh, which happened last weekend. I also host a free webinar about uh, how to sell your adored collection. If you're thinking about selling a collection, what are your options? Um, so I do that and that's actually coming up on October 7th. I will put that link in there as well. Uh, and also I'm doing a live stream show and tell of some of the awesome pieces that are in this estate sale that I'm working on right now that's going up tonight. Uh, it's a it's a two week sale, it's a two one week sales. All the details I'll put in the links, but always you welcome to go ahead and um, reach out and find me offline. Uh, you know, if you, if you have questions, I'm very accessible as most of you probably know. But again, thank you for joining this, uh, this, this open studio event. I'm gonna bring Linda up first. Linda Zeckel is the show director for the Guild. Linda, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about the Guild and the Guild Show. Okay. And then, of course, tell us about the show and what we can expect um, from it when people come next week. Okay, Linda Zeckel, um, not an artisan or anything by trade. I'm actually an accountant, a CPA. And this is my passion, my hobby, my love. So this is the stress reliever usually. So um, I've made miniatures since I was a little kid. I never even knew I was making miniatures, but I was making miniatures as a kid um, from like newspaper articles, cutting stuff down for dolls and stuff like that. So I've been involved with miniatures most of my life. 
Um, so this is my third year as the show director. We've decided to move it to New York because I think that's a great place to be. And um, what it is, IGMA is the International Guild of Miniature Artisans. So the show actually showcases a lot of these amazing artisans and fellows that have really mastered their craft and taken their skills to a new level. So during the show, we're gonna be having all kinds of stuff. We've got classes starting on Tuesday. Lynette, one of our speakers is, um, and Christine are doing classes already Tuesday morning at the show. So we've got classes all week. Kate's gonna be doing a class on Friday. We've got show, um, we've got a Broadway show Thursday night. We've got demos and desserts where you guys can come and eat desserts for free and see 11 artisans working on their crafts around round tables. And you can just walk around and see what people do. I've got about uh, over 55 artisans and uh, dealers that are gonna be selling all kinds of different things from what they make to supplies to, um, pretty much anything that you could want for the miniature world. Tools, uh, supplies, paper, um, all kinds of different things. Then we've got our um, dealer show on Saturday and Sunday where you're welcome to walk around and look at everything. Lots of stuff. Mm. And Saturday night we've got an auction where Darren's going to be our auctioneer. And you can always get some really, really cool, amazing stuff there. Um, I've got a dinner speaker Saturday night who author of The 68 Rooms, which is a really cute book about the Chicago Thorn Rooms. Uh, it's a book series. It's it's kind of like Nancy Drew meets miniatures. So these kids shrink themselves down and they go exploring the, the miniature rooms in the, the Thorn Rooms. So she's going to be uh, doing a book signing. She's our speaker there as well. Sunday, we've got a general membership meeting, so you can learn more about getting involved with IGMA. There's so much more to it than, than you can probably realize. We have uh, study programs, we have online classes, we have shows, we have an awesome uh, week in Castine every year where you can really take some amazing classes. So uh, there's a little bit of everything and it's gonna be a really busy week. So I'd love for you guys to come early, take some classes. We've still got some room in some of the classes and um, just enjoy yourself, get to know everybody. It's really, really a great community to be a part of. And um, yeah, come on by, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah, so Linda, what, like, um, uh, there are a few new names here in, in the chat box and, and w raise your hand if you've never been to a guild show, folks, in the chat box. W what advice would you give? Because I've been going to the shows for a long time, but it took me uh -huh. a long time, <laughs> like 20 years to figure out how to navigate a show. Right. How to go in and not get overwhelmed uh -huh. when it navigate and just, and this is maybe it's just me, but, you know, controlling my emotions right. when I'm seeing things. How about like, what kind of advice would you give to folks who might be new to the show circuit? Like, what, what would you tell them? Well, we already have the show brochure on the website. So oh. you, can, you can go on there. There's a PDF that links through to every single artisan's website, Etsy site, um, stuff like that. So you can actually already start planning your shopping strategy if you want. You can, see, you can see their work, you can see their website, you can see who they are, what they do, what they specialize in. And um, I would plan to be there all day, both days. If you're really into miniatures and you wanna take your time and just you know go around, meet people. A lot of the people that are dealers are makers as well. They're super friendly, you know, you can ask them questions, maybe ask them questions when there's not 20 people and try to buy from them, but it's <laughs> right. really a very good group of people. I would also make sure I bring uh, good glasses and some comfortable shoes because there's a lot of room to cover and um, there's so much to see. And you're right, you never can see everything. Yeah, no, that is, I didn't know there was a word for it, shopping strategy. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for that. <laughs> that is, I didn't know that you needed to have one, but now I know I do. Uh -huh. Maybe and I have that word, I don't know. But uh, yeah. really good advice. Good <laughs> advice. The other thing I thought was interesting that you said was, you know, something around, you know, how to behave. That there is etiquette, both from, you know, from the shoppers. And so talk a little bit about that. Like, what is the, what are some of the things that you think are opt ways to optimize you know, your shopping experience as a shopper? Well, there's a preview time from 8.30 to 10.30, which is a limited amount of shoppers. Mm. So that's a little bit extra. It's $25 for members and $35 for guests, but you're getting an exclusive two 
for the we you know open the gates and release the hounds right so <laughs> you've got a little bit more um you know elbow room at that time and um you know just be respectful try not to have a big bag banging people's stuff all over the place yeah. um i rather not have people eat or drink in the room because you know that can be dangerous for miniatures yeah. so you know be respectful of your neighbors i know a lot of people now do a lot of social media but you know be careful who you're backing up into when you want to take pictures things like that and you know just try to have a good time but you know respect others as well yeah no i think those are really good um good points especially you know I, I, and i didn't realize how valuable the preview night was especially for new morning folks. it's the morning oh, the morning sorry uh, that extra time to go in and, and it, you know, no big crowds, go and take your time, stroll through. And then when the crowds come, you, you've at least seen something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So great. So talk again, what are the dates? When is it starting full on the dates well, again? Yeah. Classes are ready to start this Tuesday. So okay. this Tuesday, there's some classes for Lynette and Christine, and there's classes that go all the way through Thursday night. The actual show is the September 30th, which is Friday night. Well, Friday night is actually the demos and desserts. That's the free night where you can see people make things and stuff like that. And we have free desserts and there's a cash bar and it should be fun. Yeah. So you'll see people doing that. That's Friday night. That's from seven to nine. That's open to anybody in the public. Then the show preview starts Saturday morning, which is the 30th. Uh, preview starts at 830. It goes 8.30 to 10.30. Then the show actually doors open at 10.30 to the public. And Saturday, it closes at 4. Then we have the auction, which everybody should stay for the auction, even if it's just for entertainment value, because it's really good. And Darren's a great auctioneer. Oh. So um, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And then we have a dinner. The, the dinner is uh, with a speaker. That's a paid dinner. I still have tickets for that if people are interested. Then Sunday is kind of a slower day as well. We've got our general membership meeting. So if you're interested in joining IGMA, that's the perfect time to see what happens, learn things, get to meet some of the board. Then the show on Sunday starts at 10, 10 to 3.30. It's a slower day, but that's actually a really good time yeah. to go through and talk to people and, you know, get to see if there's something that you want to learn to make or, yeah. you know, you've got a project that you, you're like hunting that special item for. That's really a slower day. So I would play both days if you can. Yeah. Well, awesome. That's fantastic. I just plopped in the igma.org web address it, yeah. for folks. They can go ahead and uh, link to the igma organization to learn more and to, you know, to uh, just learn more, uh, even more than what, what we've just learned from Linda. Linda, thank you so much. I hope you'll stay with us in case we have some questions. Absolutely. Yes. And if anybody has a question, email me. My email is right there on the website. You can ask me a question. I'll answer you pretty quickly. I've got my phone with me. I'll be on property already tomorrow. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Getting everything set up. So I'll be flying in the morning and then I'll be there from Monday to the Monday after. Beautiful. Would Anything you mind flopping, flopping that, that uh, uh, your address no, sure. that in case people need to get to you? And I will go ahead and stop that video and bring up Kate. Okay. Um, who is our first artist who is going to be talking to us. So hold on while I do that. Ask to start video. I think I asked to start video. Yeah, this, she knows what she's doing. Hi, Darren. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? So Kate and I go way back. Way back. Way back. <laughs> um, and, you know, I just love your work. And I'm so glad you're showing at the Guild Show. And that's it's news because this is your first... Show. This is my first show of any kind uh, will be uh, at the Guild Show. So uh, I'm excited to see what people respond to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I make lots of different things. I yeah. like work, yeah. working with clay and paper and um, all sorts of materials. I don't have a, I don't have a niche, I guess. Mm. Um, so um Something that I have been working on these last few days. Um, I want to these... Yeah, definitely show us, but I want to, yeah, Cakes. love that. Mermaid cake and little construction cake. Yes, go ahead with your yes, question. But, but, I mean, it's hard to describe your work. It's, it's, I mean, how would you describe? I would say it's like slice of life. They're just, the work that you do pushes those buttons. They just make you, they ping you with delight. <laughs> Um, yes, like, 
like maybe the the spilled baking soda. Yeah. yeah, I call it handmade modern miniatures. Oh. Um, I really like modern things. I really like it when mini scenes look as real as possible and they're not too clean. They, you know, they don't look like a, a pristine dollhouse. That they really yeah. look like like you could shrink yourself down and and go live there. Right. Right. Well, yeah. I, mean, I find your work so charming. So you say you work mostly with polymer, but there are other materials as well. Right. I love I polymer mean, clay. Uh huh. I, I love polymer clay for sure. Um, in terms of paper, I will be um, debuting these um, new scratch off lottery tickets, new and improved. I showed these on one of your webinars once before, um, yes. but you can, you can Wait, actually it's hard to see. Can you, it's it, Sorry. definitely go closer and put your hand behind okay. it because I want them to see that. Okay. I mean, if there so, could be innovation in miniatures, it's happening yes. right here with what you do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so you can actually scratch these little tickets off um, and oh, I will be um, selling, I've got several different styles yes. and colors of the scratch off. So. I will have yeah. um, those available and I have not yet posted those on my social media. That's, uh -huh. um, this is something special for the show. So. Yeah, yeah. But I think one of the first things I saw from you was your Metro cards. Oh yeah. yeah. That also for you, I think that was something that went viral in, in one of your posts. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a little tiny Metro card and I took the the picture at uh, in a real, you know, New York City subway station. Yeah. Uh, and so I, you know, I love to take things out in the wild, so to speak. I think it's great. It's great. So where do you draw your inspiration from? I mean, you're Brooklyn based, right? So you've got I'm a lot based in Brooklyn. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I just get an idea of like stuff that I'd like to try to make. Um, and then, uh, you know, it sort of goes from there. Uh, yeah. I, um, you know, my, my day job is being a journalist so uh -huh. i'm constantly you know learning new things and working on something new every day uh and so i think that that's kind of why i bounce around among different mediums right. you know paper um uh leather i've got some little leather handbags um a lot of polymer clay food um did some potion cabinets that was one of the things that had gone um, gotten a lot of interest in my social media. So I have, um, several one of a kind, um, potion cabinets. Um, yeah. I can. Yeah. I would so, love to see it. Yeah. Um, so this is one of those. Awesome. With lots of potions and, you know, packages and tarot cards and scrolls and, and all sorts of things. And then of yeah. course, you open the door, there's more potions hidden in yeah. there. So um, you know, a few of those. About, we talk about this, you know, the energy that's happening around miniatures right now and, you know, and and innovation, especially in the mm -hmm. things that you're seeing, but it's it, it it's definitely artists like you that are helping to fuel that. <laughs> I and hope so, I'm thank you. I'm excited that you're doing what you're doing and doing the types of things that you're doing, stuff that we don't often see that sort of you know, jars the senses a little bit, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing yeah. because it gets people interested and that you're going to be showing at the show. You know, yes. that is one of the most important things, I think, for, for all of us older generationers <laughs> is that we want to make sure that it's that the show is being fed with the younger generation like you are doing young and new and different things um, and bringing new uh, energy to the show. So I appreciate that, and, you know, and I think you're yeah. doing stuff and we've taken class together this summer well we, we have yes i know we hung out but i don't know what we did we didn't take the same class but no we didn't have a class this this no. year no we just had a lot of lunches and dinners together all right so <laughs> this is your first so this is your first show what's what what uh, you talked a little bit about you know uh, like talk a little bit about what what is it about the show that's you know that's exciting for you what are you looking forward to what are your expectations Sure, I have absolutely no expectations going in. Um, I really don't. Uh, I'm just hoping that somebody buys a few of my things. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's that's my only expectation. Um, yeah. But I decided to go with uh, the Guild Show as my first show, not just because it's uh, pretty close to yeah. uh, where I live, but 
Um, but I know a lot of people in this community. I've gone to uh, IGMA's Guild School uh, three times. Um, and, you know, I know some of the other folks who are selling just through either taking classes with them or, um, you know, connecting with them on Instagram. I've met a lot of miniaturists through Instagram. Uh, so it'll be fun to like be in that community in a uh, in a real way this year. Yeah, for sure. We did have a, a comment, which I'd love to hear your perspective on this. Sally, um, Sally has asked, her recommendation was ask permission to take pictures of the miniatures at a dealer's table. I think that's a really important point. This ties into what we were talking about with etiquette uh, yeah. uh, and the etiquette. Talk a little bit about that. Like, what is your perspective if somebody comes over and wants to take a photo, et cetera? Sure. My perspective is I am happy for them to take a picture. If they post it to uh, social media, I would, you know, ask that they tag me. That's uh, really the big thing. Um, and uh, I think asking permission is great. I have taken pictures for my own um, social media in the past and um, and tagged artists and things. Uh, and I think people are just happy to be promoted to an audience that maybe they haven't been exposed to before. Yeah, I think um, some of the some of the. the other generation, other older generation, including me, stop, stop. remember a time that artists were not so into anybody coming by and taking a photograph or looking at their work or scrutinizing. So there's a whole new perspective and generation that is like, well, yeah, don't don't come scrutinize, don't come and tell me how much you hate my things. No, 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 <laughs> scrutinize, scrutinize with with the with the intent to steal your ideas. That's oh. what, that, there. There used to be a time when there was a big fear amongst artists. And if, if I still some... have that, I still have that. I mean, I do see yeah. people, um, I do see people stealing things that I've done. Um, I posted, um, I'm actually going to sell some of these, but I posted these um, working Himalayan salt lamps. And then I started to see working Himalayan salt lamps pop up. Um, and so I hadn't seen anybody doing it before I posted it. Um, Rude. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, there's always the risk of that. Yeah. 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 It's really hard to control that and people are going to be just not nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing that I've done though, is I've reached out to artists, um, Michael R. Miniatures, who makes witchy kind of things. I reached out and I said, hey, you know, I'm trying to teach myself how to do this with clay. Do you mind if I model it after yours? And when I post it, I tag you. And he didn't mind um, at all. Um, so I was just trying to figure out how to make a dragon out of clay and, um, and he was very encouraging. And, and then when I sent him the picture, he gave me some feedback, which was great. Oh, nice. That's a nice courtesy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for spending a few moments with us. I'm going to go ahead and bring your video down, but hopefully you'll stay okay. in case we have any questions at the end. And in the meantime, I'm going to bring up Christine and yeah. hi, Christine Haddon, yeah. good to see you. Thank you for joining today. Thanks. So Christine, I mm -hmm. really just met you very recently. I know, and but I I've been stalking you before <laughs> COVID. <laughs> but I took one of your classes at Guild School, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. you're going to be repeating, and I hope you're going to talk to uh, talk about it. But yep. tell us a little bit about yourself, and tell us a little bit about is this your first show? And I know you're also an Enigma artist, recent artist. You got a lot going on, so tell us everything. I do. Uh, my first show was in 2019 as an attendee. Then COVID happened. Then I came back. I attended a second show. Then I became a dealer, and this will be my second show where I'm a dealer and an instructor. Mm, nice. So um, without the guild show, I don't think I would have been launched into using miniatures in a professional avenue for my career. So yeah. it, it had a very um, serious impact on my my artistic career. Yeah, uh, and it's. It, I think part of it is it's not a craft show. It's not a hobby show. It is really the best of the best that go there. I'm honored to be part of it, and it's international. The fact that after two attended shows, I have friends in South Africa and friends in Holland and friends in Indonesia. You know, where else are you going to get that? Oh, I love it. You yeah. should be spokesperson for this show. It's <laughs> 
So talk a little bit about that, your your um, transition from uh, 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 one type of artist, full scale, yeah. and talk about that background, because it's a fascinating background. I, and I, yeah. I was a graphic designer for the Yellow Pages. Then when the Yellow Pages went defunct, I went into mural painting full time for 20 years and doing faux finishing on furniture and antique restoration because the decorators I would work for would need the full gamut of, of artistic help. So I wanted to get off the ladder. The knees were starting to give me trouble. Um, I had an agent that was placing some illustration work of mine. And then I started doing full-time jigsaw puzzle design. So I work for about four different puzzle companies. Um, my puzzle name is Joelle McIntyre, which is my middle and my maiden name to keep it separate from uh, anything else I was doing. Um, and because uh, jigsaw puzzles, folks like to have a whole image in one little jigsaw puzzle piece. I started having to paint pretty much in miniature. I had a dollhouse. My dad built myself one and my sister one. I think in the Christmas of 78 or Christmas of 79, big Victorian, did a beautiful job on it. And um, I had to move it seven times in my adult life, uh, much to my husband's disappointment. It became a video game console holder for my boys because I had all boys. And with our final move and the youngest one going off to college, um, I got into miniatures then full time. Um, so I still do the illustrations, but the miniatures are really tugging at my heartstrings and definitely taking over much more of my workspace these days. Yeah, well, we want to definitely see some of the things we might be able to see from the show next week. But talk okay. just a little bit about the transition from full scale to small scale and maybe some of the challenges. It sounds like you got a little bit of a head start by having to go small, but talk I a little did. bit about that transition. Well, uh, what, what was really helpful is um, going to Castine and then applying for Artisan. Even though I made Artisan, I received a letter back with recommendations of things I had to change to ever consider being a fellow, which is the highest level. Things like brush strokes and framing, everything when you're working in miniatures has to scale down to 1 12th. It doesn't do us much good to do a nice piece of furniture if your handles meant you had to have hands that were the size, you know, of a giant's hand to open, you know. So the same went with framing. You know, my framing was very heavy, um, making sure my brush strokes, you can't see them because truly, if you're bringing down your artwork that small, you can't necessarily see individual brush strokes. They have to blend almost like a photograph. Wow. Um, so that, that was a big change, um, especially since the mural painting, they wanted heavy brush strokes. They wanted to see texture. Yeah. So boom. I'm backtracking on that. Yeah, fascinating. That's awesome. All right. So what? So can we see some things, maybe? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, to, to talk speak to the Bob life. Ross night, we're going to yes. have two Bob Ross nights, and this is the autumn one that folks are going to do. And I think Darren, you did the ocean one. I think I did that one. Oh, you did this I one. I did okay. that one. Oh no one went away crying. Uh, we all had so many laughs. It's like a paint and drink night. It's a lot more fun than a traditional painting class. It is. But, it is. Um, when we talk I about... Say, my, I, I did what? walk out of that class very happy. I never painted in my life. No. You do walk out feeling really happy. <laughs> and hopefully people accomplished. aren't Sorry. so intimidated about picking up a paintbrush and working in miniature after that night. And then right. you can start doing more serious art. As far as serious art goes, these yeah. are a couple of the pieces I'll be bringing. Um, this is a scene of Monhegan Island that I painted with a handmade and hand burnished frame. Lovely. Just beautiful. that one is called King of the Pond. Oh, wow. And this one is a footbridge. This was actually done in miniature on site. So oh, I, I sat with gouache um, and painted that one on site. And the colors aren't coming over the screen as well, but this one's 
<laughs> this one's a hard one to bring. I kind of wanted to keep that home, but my husband said you can't keep them all. So <laughs> there we go. Um, and then if you're coming to the demos and dessert night, I'm going to be painting a one inch painting ink wash, which wow. is a, a medium that is an opaque watercolor. It's very user friendly and um, folks can see what goes into painting it with really, really tiny brushes. Um, yeah. Can you? Oh yeah, we can totally, kind yeah. of, but yeah, we can tell. Tiny brush. That's tiny. So that'll be at Demos and Dessert Night. And then the other thing that I bring uh, for the dealer show is I do, I'm gonna teach a class called Upscaling Cheap Furniture. Love so that this idea. is a 1970s piece of Concord furniture, which was nice and shiny, you know, pecan paint stain. And we rework it and do some decoupage and keeping like with Kate, having that potion feel. Um, which is very popular with our younger miniaturists. I yeah. gave my my try. So we're going to learn how to do decoupage in that class as well. Yeah. What I love about your, your work and your classes is there is such an educational component to it that it transcends just, okay, technique. You're getting the background, like the Bob Ross. It was totally enjoyable hearing all about him oh. and just about oh, his- Oh, here's my shrine. I can show you. There's my shrine to Bob Ross. I love it. <laughs> It was just just pure fun, and I really highly recommend if you guys um, can take that class. It's such, and I, 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 you should take that on the road to the to the commercial world because you know it's all about getting new people to see miniatures in a different way. I would yeah. love to take you on the road and let people see <laughs> what it means to make miniatures, to enjoy miniatures. Unbelievable! Just we great. need to find somebody who can do a miniature shag carpet and miniature paneling so they could have the whole rumpus room feel going on. <laughs> love that! I love that. So, all right. So we're gonna see paintings. We're gonna see. Um, how about other work like your jigsaw, your miniature jigsaw puzzle? Was that something that you were? You that was with? something I did for Castine. Oh, I, I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> for this show, I kept with furniture and I do have some vintage pieces as well. Oh. Um, but I'm really trying to focus on doing the fine art. I'm going to be teaching painting at the Guild School and you'll be able to at the Guild Show see the two paintings that we're going to teach in a traditional painting um, atmosphere. That's actually a really good point, which is that Guild School will be at the Guild Show. So you, yes. if you're interested in Guild School, there'll be all the folks there. I think Jean's going to be there, um, yeah. the new school director. So you can get all of the information you need in case you want to um, go to Guild School. But yep. And plus some of the teachers, you will be there. So they, if they want to take your class, they can ask questions and they can find out more information from you. Right. Right. I love it. That is just awesome. All right. So I definitely put in chat box where people can find you, hannahartworks.com. Yeah. I know your or website. Hannah and, Han and Miniatures on Instagram. You'll get okay. to see what I'm working on. Good point. Okay. All right. So I hope you can hang around for a little bit while we finish up and then maybe we might have uh, other questions. Great. So, Thanks. Awesome. And I will. And so Lynette hand spins miniature pottery you are also an igma artisan so hold on we're gonna ask you to say there you are hello <laughs> wait can't hear you yet but go ahead hold on maybe we need to unmute you ask to unmute there we go there we go now can you hear yes. me yes cool. we can. welcome welcome thank you for thank joining you. i'm so glad we're gonna get folks to see who might not know who you are um but you spin the most beautiful pottery in small scale oh just thank in, you and all different scales too which i want you to talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that but tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about what inspired you to make miniatures and then of course we're going to want to see what you're going to bring to the show oh, and then cool. we're gonna see a little bit of a, a demonstration maybe not a full-on demo but we're going to get to see a little bit more about how you work okay uh, I, like Linda, started making miniatures when I was a little girl. I was playing with paper dolls and Barbies and all kinds of fun stuff, and I made my own little clothes. But I didn't actually get started into dollhouse miniatures until I had a little girl myself. And it is, at her four-year birthday, I made her a dollhouse. Oh. So when I was researching getting things to fill that dollhouse, I found some lovely things that were not appropriate for a four-year-old, like little glass compotes that were spun glass. Yeah. And 
oh, beautiful, delicate wooden furniture that I couldn't let her play with. Yeah. So I started collecting then, and that's been some years ago. My daughter's in her 30s now. <laughs> oh, wow. So you began as a collector. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. I did. And, and I started making what I could, but right. there were things I didn't think I could make. And among those were china and porcelain. And I thought, oh, no, I can't do that. Well, guess what? I figured out I can. But do you have an art background? Where did all the, the creativity come from? Oh, I was born with the creativity. It just had to develop a little bit. And I worked with several different mediums. I still do some other things, too. Polymer clay and paper and fabric and yarns and... Uh, I, I just kind of concentrated on ceramics and found that is my true love. I really yeah. enjoy working with clay and porcelain. Yeah, so you found your sweet spot of what you love to do. And that was going to be one of my questions, which is, what do you love to do? Because at the end of the day, as, as a miniaturist, as an artist, you have lots of choices. So you have to sort of pick and choose. What do you want to focus on? What do you want to spend your time? What what skills do you want to develop? So you landed on pottery and, and ceramics. You know, just as a point of question that I have, what is the difference between porcelain and pottery and clay and <laughs> me? There are different levels of clay, different qualities of clay. And it starts at the lower end of earthenware, which is a low fire clay. It's usually dug out of the ground, at least that's how it started, and then purified. Porcelain is a whole different ball game. That's more of a, a man-made item with kaolin in it, which is from China. And it's dug out of the earth as well, but it's very pure and it's very white. And that kaolin, when it's fired at high temperatures, turns translucent, like your fine china at home. Oh, so that's the difference. But they're both materials like a clay or an earth-based material, yes, they but they're are. just different qualities and properties that when they're fired up, they give you the end product, which is... Yes. And ceramics are perfectly fine. They just are not translucent and they are not uh, transparent at all. They're very opaque. You can see with the light shining behind this, it's still very opaque. If I use a piece of china or my porcelain, when you look through that, you can see the light go through back behind it. There you go. Oh my goodness. This yeah. is a little leaf that I had made. It's a leaf tray. It has feet under it, as you can see here. There's the feet. Yes, I see the feet. The oh. top is the a fall colored leaf. Yeah. And so I use real leaves to shape those and make the veining. And, the, and I'm sorry, that's pottery or porcelain? Because Porcelain. That's porcelain. It was translucent, yeah. The, do you and you work in both? I do. And and will we be seeing both at the at the oh, show? Absolutely. I'm I'm kind of famous for my very delicate handles that I have on my pottery. This is pottery. It is actually just clay. It's not uh, porcelain. I just recently started into the porcelain, and this oh. is a little one twelfth scale. Actually, it would be a large vase in one twelfth oh. scale with some flowers in it, and that is with my uh, curly Q handle. That was my signature. Yeah. So so the, the coloring and, and does that happen after or is that in the clay? I, I don't. It happens after that is a glaze a and glaze. you glaze them afterward and fire it again. And then the glaze melts into the clay itself and becomes part of it. So it won't, it won't flake off, it won't come off. It doesn't scratch off and it won't rub off. It just, it's a part of the clay once it has finished it's being so fired. Sweet. Stunning, stunning. Thank you. It's a glaze. And and, a, and what is the glaze made of? Is it? It's made of a bit of clay slip and then some minerals, usually lots of different minerals that make up the composition. It's a very chemical process. And, and how do you get the color? The heat. Oh, the heat brings it, makes it that blue kiln. or that rich cranberry. Yes. Do you know yes. what you're going to get or is that part of the, the learning and the skill? When you buy commercial glazes, you do usually know what you get, though the conditions and the shape of your piece can change it very much. So you have to experiment. I've got a lot of test pieces that I did and found out which glazes worked with which clays, which worked with porcelain at a higher temperature and which didn't. I found some that didn't. Yeah. It's, it's a process, but your work is just so stunning and beautiful. Thank so you. we're going to see both porcelain and pottery. So yes. talk a little bit about how you actually, we were going to do a full on demo, but we had some technical difficulties, but show yes. us some of the tools that you actually use. Okay. Not a problem. Take your well, work. first off, you need to have a little mini wheel. 
and I do. This is a little larger one because I, I work at it very hard, lots and lots and lo lots of hours. So this one is a little heavier than most, but I have some that I bring to the show that are just little circular wheels, and those I do sell. And they're much easier to work with. I can turn this on for you, and you can see it's spinning around. There's a piece of clay on there, and it's ready to go. But it was ready for the demo, and I'll show you. There you go. You can see it's no, off. But, I mean, you know, pe people think that there might be some big mystique about it, but no, this yeah. is your machine. This is what you use. It's a wheel. It's very simple, yeah. And the tools are very basic. I yeah. tell my students when I'm teaching a class that you can make everything I make with these two utensils. One tool that's curved and sharp, and the other end is flat and sharp. This right. one is a wire loop tool that's flat on one side and open in the middle, but it's flat and curved. And the other end is just rounded. And let's see if you can see that better. There you go. Yes, yeah. sure. And those two tools will get you most everything that I make. The other tools that I have in my kits and so on are refined uh, for refining edges and doing special things. But you can still make them. And I use very tiny paintbrushes. There's a little bitty one oh, and wow. a hat pin. I sign my works with a hat pin. Oh, is that right? Oh if God. you sign it into the clay, then it's fired into the clay and it can't ever be obscured. It, you'd have to grind off part of the clay. So yeah. it, that's part of the bottom of every one of my pieces. And let's see, sometimes they show up well, other times not so much. So we'll just have to see if that shows up. This one, it's, it's a little easier to see. This is actually one of my turtle bowls. I don't know if you'll get to see the initial on that or not. It's hard to see, but it is. Sorry, but I'll show you the turtle. Here's the turtle bowl. These were very popular at previous shows, so I made some more. Let's see. Other way. There you go. And oh. it's a little turtle crawling across the sand, and the scene behind it is a bowl of sand and sky and maybe some waves. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's just awesome. Uh, Thank you. So this is your first, this is not your first guild show. No, 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 no. Oh. A guild show was my very first show, but it's been three years. Right, that's awesome. All yeah, right. thank you. So we uh, I do have your um, your website here, so folks can find you online. And and so if they want to take classes, is there still room in some of your classes? There is. I added another class after the deadline, no less. But it was oh. between my other two classes, and I was already set up, so it's not a problem to add more people. So if you do want to take one of the classes, there is still space. Or maybe Linda can counteract this. Yeah. The last I checked there yeah. were still spaces. I wanted to say one other thing too, yes. if you don't mind. I have what I call a little whale tail. And this is in honor of those in Maui who is, whose island has been devastated and the proceeds from the whale tails will go to Maui relief. Oh, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you you're All very right. welcome that's fantastic all right so i'm going to bring i want to bring the other folks up and just to you know um see if there are any questions that anyone might have linda i'm bringing you up starting videos christine it's kind of like the brady bunch so i i'm look i'm looking i'm looking forward to coming myself i'll be there on saturday and sunday i wish now i was coming on friday because the demo and desserts mm -hmm. is such a fun thing i forget like, you know, we forget that this is, you know, this is a very social kind of world <laughs> that we're in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't really get a chance. The show, for, for me, the show is all about, I'm shopping. I Don't talk to me, I'm shopping. <laughs> but um, the night, the Friday night is a great chance to, to chat with people. I don't know if you guys agree. Yeah, for sure. Oh, very much. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Linda just confirmed there is, is still space in... Um, in uh, uh, Lynette's class, uh, we didn't talk about Kate. You're also teaching. I'm also teaching a class, yes. Um, and there are spaces left. Uh, we're going to be um, decorating these little um, holiday tins. Um, and um, I'm dropping cookies everywhere um, <laughs> and making making little chocolate chip cookies out of polymer clay and is this for uh, all levels can anybody join can anybody just plop in and for all of your classes is this, yes okay. there's anybody, no all, levels? all of the all of the tools i'm providing um all you need to do is show up if you want mm -hmm. magnification or more lighting um suggest you bring that and i think uh lent to his advice for people to bring extension cords Okay. Um, if they, okay. You never know. It's a new. It's a new <laughs> facility for us. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we're gonna have them yeah. keep them in the in the room. I, go ahead. 
I do have wheels and tools for any number of people who would like to show up. 10 per class. Oh, that's perfect. And same here. All my classes, you just show up. That's mm -hmm. it. That's awesome. Does and anybody I've only got any space questions? for eight oh, more, I think. Eight more. All right, good. Good. Yeah. And it's for all levels, which is fantastic. Yeah. So, yes. Does anybody have any final questions for any of our panelists before I, we say goodbye to them and can't wait to see everybody next week? I'm so crazy excited. It's the Guild Show. It's the show season. Um, I wish I was coming earlier next year. I'm going to have to build that in, but that's actually I wish you were coming earlier too. Yeah. It's you're right. You're right across the river. Aren't you? I know. <laughs> Don't ask, but you know, and, and I, I, this is what I talk about mostly is like prepare, prepare and plan because it, you know, you've got a plan. So I, it's like my biggest advice and I didn't take it, but anyway, <laughs> but okay. So, um, we don't have any other questions from anybody online, but I will say thank you everybody for joining. This has been an awesome little time. I can't wait to see everybody and thank you all at home for joining. I really appreciate it and have a great rest of your, have a great week coming up. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.